Good afternoon and welcome to episode 679, which will be fun today. The topic today um, is the secret to success with dating apps is Disney. <laughs> um, I want to break that one down a bit in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby and I am a, in case you figured it out when you're watching this broadcast, I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And this is what inspires and informs my talks. It also is what inspires and informs my um, Facebook Lives that I do every day, of which there's over 670 now because I've been doing this for over two years. And they're officially called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. That's a lot to write out, so now I call them MFTM for short, in case you're wondering what it stands for. And so I do this on Facebook Live first, and then I put them onto my YouTube, cha YouTube channel after that in case you're watching it there. But if you're watching me live on Facebook, on my personal page, we can interact. So you can comment, question, share, post, all that sort of stuff. So again, this is episode number 679 in a long series of talks about love and relationships, mostly. And the topic today is around the area of dating apps. And the title is, again, um, a and this is actually according to an article I read today, that success in the dating apps um, or the secret to success in the dating apps is apparently Disney. And I'll explain what, what the article is about and then I'll, then I'll add to it my reflections. I'll put it that way. So first of all, <laughs> so I, couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing when I was reading the article. Um, basically it was an article um, based on Plenty of Fish, the dating app, not dating site, but dating app, where they said you, were, but you basically were 3.6 times more likely of date of leaving the app in relationship is the way they framed it if you happen to mention disney in your profile now before you run out and do that yourself here's some caveats they actually said in the app that you know <laughs> i was just saying this in the article that there is certainly a, a disney thematic because it's one of those um high listed activities that some people are so addicted to that when they find a match it's kind of like inevitable <laughs> to a degree but secondly more importantly just like at Disney, there are Prince Charmings, there are also evil villains, meaning that Disney in your profile does not necessarily mean that you're a big fan of Disney. It could actually be a ploy, I should say, from some particular players, not you, but the people you might, might meet out there. But I want to speak to a bigger picture about this, because the thing is, it sounds so trite to say, oh, Disney is the secret to success with dating apps because you mention your profile and you meet someone who likes Disney, you'll immediately fall in love and you'll be one living happily ever after. That has happened once in a while. At the same time, there's more to making a relationship work than having one thing in common. Like, surprise. But this is the thing that cracks me up is the way the article is written, it implies that, well, if you just put Disney in, you'll be fine. And I understand this single focused or single topic focused mindset but truly, trying to figure out what your partner wants and then making a profile match that is a really backwards way of approaching dating and relationship. Now, if you're using the dating apps to go have fun, to have a fling, to have a great encounter, then go ahead and do that. It can be fun. I did talk about this on, I think two days ago, I did a talk about the dating apps in their um, usefulness or lack of usefulness. But in this context, I want to speak to the, the, the idea of one about, sorry, not two, one, <laughs> about sharing your intentions and what you want in dating apps as a, as a mindset of how you do it the right way. And secondly, something you might want to do before you go on the dating apps. And if you've been watching my broadcast over the last several months, maybe a year or two, um, you probably know where I'm going to go with part of this conversation. So first of all, the challenge with most people when they go on dating apps is they tend to use the, they follow a formula and they also tend to use the same old, tired old um, description, messaging, biography in each of the dating apps, it doesn't work. The truth is that most people don't put their true expression, their true description, their true um, transparency in the dating apps. And the reason why I think Disney works in this context is because most people don't put in there what their deep, dark secrets are, or their passionate loves are, but people like Disney are pretty naked about it. They're like, I love Disney and screw anybody else who doesn't like it sort of thing. So it creates an 
an automatic raising of the bar of meeting somebody who has a common, common attraction, which is great. But if you don't like Disney, then what? You could put that, but it might not be effective. But what, you, what it's about is how do you put something in your dating profile that stands out so that somebody who has a similar belief system can find it? And that's the thing. When you follow the standard formulaic approach of putting in, um, you know, looking for my other half, and I have a whole issue about people finding their other half because you're not half a person, but looking for that missing piece that, that they'll make their life complete. Their life is going so well, and they want you to show up and make their life whole. Bullshit. Um, <laughs> oh, my microphone's right here, so you can hear it. I really don't agree with that because, frankly, most of that stuff is formulaic. It is bullshit. It is made up, and it's not real. But when you say you're committed because you have a dedication to um, saving the coastline by changing the way that we deal with trash or something like big, you know, some big vision you have, then you're actually authentically, authentically focused on and working toward. Finding someone who has a similar belief system is a good thing. And I've talked about that actually outside of the dating apps because reality is if you are committed to doing something big in the world in some sort of service, commitment, dedication, something like that, you oftentimes meet people of like-mindedness in those environments. Surprise, surprise. And it's possible if you're single, you might meet someone who you're attracted to who's also single, key, if you want a monogamous relationship, in those environments when you're not doing that stuff. So it makes sense that if you put that stuff out in your dating profile, you might meet somebody who has a common interest in the same arena as you do. That's all well and good. Now let me get to part two. That's part one, as I mentioned. Part two is what you might want to think instead of doing before you even open up the dating apps. Simply um, know what you want before you go out on the dating apps. Know what you want before you even sign up for the apps. Know what you want before you write your profile. Because first of all, it's going to change how you may write your profile in the dating apps and dating sites too, for that matter. But secondly, it will start toning your focus to a point that is more accurate versus being scattershot. Because most people I know, and you maybe you like this as well, and when you go on dating apps, you just scan through profiles where the criteria that you're searching for is a height range, a location range, an age range, and maybe um, whether they drink or do drugs. And that's about it, which is very minimal and pretty, well, and let's be simple, uh, simple about this. That's pretty much gonna guarantee you're gonna meet a lot more people. Wonderful but there won't be ones you wanna to match to. So having specificity about what you really want before you go on the dating apps makes the choices you put out, put out it makes, let me say it another way, makes the choices that you plan to do on the dating apps much more specific, specific, I'll try that one again, and also more accurate, so you're actually gonna likely to meet somebody who matches that. When you don't have any clue what you're looking for, you kinda of like, well, the, the way the old, the old story goes, um, if, if you don't know where you're going, any anywhere will do. And if you don't know what you're looking for, any partner will do. So you've been saying, you may be saying no to all the people who don't fit because you don't know what you're looking for. Clear focus is helpful in this area. Now, backing that up one step further, I didn't back in my seat for this one, <laughs> is, this, is that a lot of people choose their relationship as a reaction to their past bad breakup. This is one of these um, unfortunate mindset reactions that people carry. When people date out of reaction, it's not a good choice. In fact, what I've seen people do many times, oh, sorry, I just remember what Tuesday, I just remember what Tuesday broke up is about. I'll come back to that in a second. The thing about relationships are each one is generally its own experience, its own world, its own thing. And when you leave that relationship, the only thing you, you, no, 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 I'll say that. I was gonna say the only thing you wanna take out of that is what you learned from it, but that's not always the case. A lot of times you're carrying your own wounds and, and heartbreak because it was a bad breakup or it was a mad up, made, messed up relationship or you had a really challenging time, which happens. So there's some wounding to be healed. So it's hard to walk away from the relationship without healing or sorry it's hard to walk away from a relationship sometimes because the pain is so great but working on the healing is a priority so uh, part 2a <laughs> 
is to make sure that you've healed from your past relationship before you go looking for the new one. Because you're coming from reaction or aversion or wanting to be um, distracted by love to avoid the pain of the past is not the right approach. I'm going to be real clear about that. In fact, I've talked about that a few times in my broadcasts. So first, making your healing a priority first before you can go looking for anything else. So you're, you're healing, you get back to wholeness. So when you're looking for a relationship, you come from a much cleaner, whole and healthier place. Then the second part of that, so that would be, that was 2A, 2B. To be or not to be, yeah, right. <clears throat> so the next part of that is then, okay, so what do you really want? Do you actually have a clue of what you're looking for? That's not simply an, an aversion to what happened before. Or maybe you want to match your first true love that was so amazing that you want to repeat that again with somebody else. Either way, get honest with yourself. Get clear about what you really do want that may or may not include Disney. <laughs> Just get back to the title. Because that may be one of your priorities. For me personally, it's not. Just so you know, you know in case you're worried about me. Um, but for a lot of people, there's other things that are priorities. Maybe your priority is to be committed to a personal growth journey, to be in seminars and teachings and trainings all the time. I know people like that. I can introduce you, maybe. No, um, <laughs> let me stay back to the topic. But whatever that is, make that clear that in your, your intention, what you want to create. So before, again, before you go on the dating apps, go clear about, go clear about what you want, whether it's just by journaling or doing a, um, a vision board or just writing about it in some other way. Maybe you're going to write notes to yourself on your computer or you're going to make basically collect pictures of things that you like. That's the, that's the, the, uh, mind, uh, the, the vision board idea. There are many ways of doing it. I actually have a program called Attract the Man You Want for the ladies. That is definitely help you with that. I'll put your link in the comments so you can check it out. But part of that process is to get clear on your vision. What moves you? What inspires you? What touches your heart? What is it that you really would love to have that will fulfill you many ways that you don't already have. And the key, by the way, a part of that is whatever you're looking for does not fill up something you think you're missing. The only thing it can do is add to who you already are, so make sure you're already whole to start with. A quick reminder from other broadcasts, two halves is not how relationships work. It is two holes that make, two holes with a W, by the way, that make it more than a relationship. That's the way to be in a relationship. So that's a piece of the teaching right there. At that point, when you've got clear vision, clear intention, and you know what you're really looking for, then you can go on the dating apps or dating sites or just go socially, different places. And then you'll meet people. What a concept. Meet people in real life. I miss those days. <laughs> the dating apps, sorry, this is, I talked about this, I think, on Tuesday. I can't remember now. It was talking about definitely being, being single. Is the dating apps are real, real, um, I'm going to say this. The dating apps are like a, um, there's an analogy that's in my head and it's not coming out. I have an issue, I don't know if I have an issue with dating apps, but I think it's a depletion. In the old days, for those of us who are actually more than 20 years old, <laughs> actually maybe 30 because you have time to grow up as well, the dating arena was much more we met somebody at a social environment, at a party or through business or other, other place of engagement where you meet somebody in person, you have a conversation and you discover things about each other and it's kind of the fun exploration. The dating apps have kind of removed that um, freshness from the exploration, which is why I'm not a big fan of them. I love the idea of meeting people in real life. It's kind of why I, uh, connections are like more, more than anything is one of my passions in life is that connection with other people, romantic or not, just connection. So using the dating apps as a tool is one thing, but don't limit yourself in your choices. Get out in the world and meet people. Go out to dinner alone, go, go to movies alone, go to social engagements and meet up with people at uh, book signings or well, I'll go book signings on the mind because I'm going to see a book friend's book signing Saturday night and then the LA Times book festivals this weekend as well, which I might go to downtown in uh, USC. See, getting out and playing. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go down to the book festival just to meet people. I've got two friends of mine who've got book signings going on, so I'm going to go see them there. I might meet somebody special there, who knows? But I'm going to get out in life and enjoy life, which I highly recommend if you're looking to date is do that. Don't just sit on the app in the corner and just like scroll, scroll, scroll. Or tap and scroll, whatever you do that. I highly encourage you to get out in life and enjoy life, partly because it'll, it'll add to your um, appearance of interest because you'll be out in the world exploring. But also it will put you in a place where you might meet somebody or some bodies 
that will be appealing to what you're looking for. Especially if you go to places and events and things that are your deep, well not your deep, but your um, enjoyable experiences that you love doing. For example, maybe you love volunteering with horses. So you go out, to go, you go out and you go um, to horse ranches and help out with that. It's a smaller population for sure, but you might meet somebody there who also loves horses, so you have common ground. Maybe it's somebody you work with a homeless shelter, or you go work with animals at the rescue, rescue, um, like animal rescue facilities. There's also a place you can go that can be social engagements and parties or movie premieres, but also there can be environments you go that are much more heart-centered, and that's one of the things I'm passionate about, by the way, is meeting people where the heart is open. Again, it's talking about connection, Connection really works when the heart is open on both sides. When you meet, it has a much more... Um, what's the word looking for? Full-bodied experience. I'll put it that way. So my passion in talking about this is really that I would love that if you're somebody who's single and dating, that you go out and meet people in social environments, whether it's service environments or social engagements. And again, even at work, sometimes you, I've, relationships do happen at work. I used to, when I was in corporate, I did have that happen once or twice to me. Um, yeah, that's another topic. Um, <laughs> not necessarily recommended because there is a thing about you know being the corporate. Once you do, if it doesn't work out, then you see each other every day can be a problem. But socially, getting out and meeting people. If you have a spiritual organization you study, you you go with. I go to my spiritual center every Sunday, and there are wonderful people that meet up there, and there are sometimes relationships that get birthed from those places. So again, it's getting out in life and meeting people. That to me is much more recommended than the dating apps. Period, because you have a chance to explore and express and be yourself in a much more attractive way than, than two or three still images on a dating app. Even though some of these dating apps are including video now, it's still not the same thing as meeting somebody in person. <laughs> First of all, because a lot of people who shoot their own video on dating apps don't, don't mirror the image so that they are backwards when you meet them in real life. Let me speak to that one for a second. This is a very weird one, but maybe I'll speak to this one too. When you take selfies, I believe... Most phones, when you take selfie photographs, have you the right way around. See, so looking at the camera right now, this is my left hand, so you can see it on the left side of your screen. On my screen, it's on the right-hand side because I look mirrored to myself, which throws me off a little bit. This is one thing about doing reflected the right way around. But if you watch people doing Facebook Lives, when they do them backwards, they are backwards to the camera, which means that when you look at them in real life, they look different, they look weird somehow. For example, if I hold up a book, which I'm doing right now, this is my friend Dr. Sue Mortis' book, See the energy coach? You can read that text the right way around because I've got the screen flipped. So when you, if you are doing videos for your dating sites, dating apps, those sort of things, I invite you to flip the camera. There's ways of doing it inside the app. Flip the screen so it, or flip the, um, the camera so it's recording you the right way around because then you appear on video the way you appear in real life. And trust me, when you see people who are in real life who look different in the mirror, because if, you know, if, like, if you're like me, well, if you're like 90%, 90.9% .9 of the person, the people on the planet, none of us are symmetrical. Our faces are a lot are lopsided, naturally. It's kind of the uniqueness of our individuality. So when you go out in the world, you meet people that you've only, they've only seen you in backwards videos, they may not even recognize you. So a little pro tip, if you're doing videos for your Facebook, pro, for your Facebook pages or doing them for your dating profiles or wherever else, I highly recommend you make sure you put your video the other way around so that you're seeing the way that people see you in real life. That was a bonus tip, by the way. So to, to finish this up, um, <laughs> there's so much I can talk about now. I'm realizing it's popping in different ways. Common interests are a key value. That's why the Disney point is, is, is the Disney idea is a point, which is common values. Most people in dating apps don't express the common values, which is why you don't always know what you're getting when you meet somebody. For ladies especially, when you're in social environments, you tend to have more, more radar in your intuition, more sensitivity to picking up if somebody's a good person or not. So when you meet men at these social environments, trust that instinct. You have skills and intuition that you may not have tapped into for a while, but it's a powerful skill to bring to the fore because when you tap into it, it will generally guide you well with one caveat. And the one caveat is this. I mentioned before about getting out from old relationships and healing those wounds from the past relationships. That's part of my work in my coaching, by the way. That can override your sensitivity, can override your intuition, because you may be in such a wounded place that your intuition is muffled by your hurt and wounding. 
which is another reason why I recommend highly that before you go on dating again, you do take care of yourself, you love yourself and you heal yourself. Like that's one of the early steps I mentioned, like step 2A, I think it was. I'll keep track of my steps. But my reminder to you is this. You can go on the dating apps, dating sites, as much as I recommend in real life personally. Before you do, know what you're looking for. Heal yourself first. Actually, sorry. Heal yourself first. Know what you're looking for. And put it in a way that is succinct, but honest and transparent. So when people you meet see it, or so to say, when people are perusing and they see you, they know what you're really about whether it's Disney or something else. I truly believe that you can find what you're looking for when you know what you're looking for first. Well, that was second. He was there first, know what you're looking for, then go looking. I think it was that, that was the sequence I put out. <laughs> this is making sense somewhere. Is really to look from, look from your own heart and know what you're really looking for. And one little PS, the dating apps show a finite slice of, of people, of the population, of possible dates. If you don't find somebody there, do not despair. That's a very limited pool you're looking in. So if you are looking for a relationship, again, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments for the program I have. Getting clear what you want first is important because it do, you don't know where you're gonna meet them. You might meet them at the coffee shop or a grocery store. So don't, it, with the dating apps, the dating pool seems to be shrunken and you think oh, you're gonna have no choices. Don't even get worried about it. It's not about the dating apps. It's about your experience of what you want, making yourself more attractive to create that reality in the world. I can help you with that. So some links I'm gonna put in the comments for you to find if you wanna check them out. One is my Attract the Man You Want program for the ladies. I'm also gonna put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me as a gift from me to you. It's a conversation we have to see where you're going, what you're looking for. And just for good measure, I'll put the self-love practice in there because if you are carrying wounds from past relationship, loving yourself is one of the first steps to getting back on your feet again. That's my selfish self promo. So having said all that, I thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put in below. And if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. Um, feel free to share this video in your groups and other places that might get value from this. This is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. I put the replays on my business page, which is barryselby.author. Feel free to like my page. And also onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And you can watch all my broadcasts there or on my business page. That's the easy place to find them. Um, in case you haven't figured it out by now, if you're someone who's been challenged by love, looking for love in all the wrong places, I'm here to help. So check out the links I put in the in the broadcast. Check out the links I put in the comments. And I hope you got value from this broadcast. And if you have any questions, again, put them in the comments below. I respond when I sign off. Um, and tomorrow will be episode 680. We'll see what that's going to be. Lots of stuff is brewing lately, so I'm going to have some interesting topics. There's another Me Too conversation brewing as well, which I've talked about a couple of times. That may show up tomorrow, we'll see. So don't forget, 5 p.m. Pacific time, or remember, excuse me, remember, let's firm the way you want to do it. 5 p.m. tomorrow, Pacific time, here on my business, on my personal page. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.